This is Jen with SeductionUnleashed.com, helping you unleash your best with women and beyond. And today, today we have a special topic because I hear this shit a lot. And ultimately, I think one of the most common issues with men today is you get the idea that if you go up to a woman that say you don't know whether it be in a non-social environment like the street or a coffee shop or whatever the case or a social environment like a party, a lot of guys have this idea that you just want to go in and get that quick cute little cute fucking funny number that it's that happens in two minutes maybe you say a name you trade two or three things back and forth and then you ask her number or you just casually ask real cool like hey you want to you know get some coffee sometime and it seems smooth because a lot of times what ends up happening is you actually do get that number and she smiles and she seems like she's all with it and it seems everything seems like it's firing in all cylinders and then later on when you actually text her when you actually contact her back you end up realizing that you get no fucking reply at all nothing zilch you're there like man let me just give a couple of hours just a couple of... well i mean maybe she maybe she's busy i mean she says she did say she she takes care of kids and uh yeah exactly you get a fucking flake you get a girl who does not return your call and does not definitely show up for that fucking date and i gotta say for me personally from the age from 13 up until the age of 18 i did not really i was going i was meeting girls through social circle through school through online through parties and whatnot but i never actually really started going up to girls like say on the street or like random women that i did not know had no connection to was no environment just like completely 100 percent cold until i was like 18 but when that happened the most difficult thing was getting over the approach just getting over the situational thing like everything's a situational thing like you could talk to a girl and be charming but you might be in an elevator with a girl and that might the situation of that might it might throw enough of a curveball to throw you off so it's just a matter of adjusting for me because I already had had years of success with girls but going up to them on the street was a little differently but what happened was is early on right off the bat I actually started having success well, what, what, what it was is again the most difficult thing was just going up and approaching once I got past that point it felt like oh shit like this is this is some bread and butter shit I'm just vibing it feels like the same thing that I've been doing in the past it was just that intro that part where you just like you're trying to get past that whole stranger danger shit and ultimately get her to relax to actually have a normal conversation with you if she isn't you know doing having a million other things going on and that that was just inevitable variables too when you go up to girls cold that's just reality one of the first sets that i had was actually seemed like a huge success because i actually managed to make out with the girl and she even mentioned how she always had a thing for asian dudes and we were in a we were in an environment where there weren't a lot of asian dudes so i was like yo this is in the fucking bag but what ended up happening was i got her number and then i like she just never texted me again like she had, no i gave her my number she just never texted me again like i never got hit up by that chick again. oh i think i hit her up and she never replied and it blew my fucking mind because we even kissed and that shit was mind-blowing because at the end of the day it's like everything seems to be going well but then i kind of looked back on it and i was like well actually you know what i didn't really look back on it until it happened again happened again in a similar kind of in a similar kind of fashion except this time i didn't kiss the girl but regardless it was a situation where it seemed to be going really fucking well i was flirting with the chick i mean it was going amazing seemingly but then later on i realized what it really was was that i was flirting with her so much i had so much of that push pull teasing you know what i mean that whole dynamic going with the chick that ultimately what ended up happening was i put my foot in my mouth because i didn't open up my mouth and talk about the actual things in my life that really fucking matter those things that build that solid connection and what ended up happening was these chicks flaked out on me because it's like you're flirting you have everything you're cute you're charming but you don't have enough to really solidify her seeing you again she's just like oh that's just that cute funny guy but it's not enough for her to actually see you again later on with her emotions died down she does she's not there like oh that's Jin. that's the chinese puerto rican guy from the bronx who you know he grew up in the inner city or he had these struggles he went through this transformation or he likes this cartoon and just all these different type of things that ultimately make you you i mean i think the first girl i didn't she didn't even know my fucking name i pretty much think like that's how much i was just so lost in the whole flirty thing and that is ultimately the problem is because we see these videos where, we, where these guys it's like you see a video is viral a guy goes up to a girl in the street but he goes up to her and says like one or two cute things or one or two funny things she laughs and then she just gives the number and all the dudes who don't know any better you're at home watching this shit like oh shit 
this is the shit. And then you go out and you actually do it. And then some of you reach that success. You go on, you tell everyone, oh man, I got her number. And then nothing fucking happens. This is something that happens across with guys everywhere across the nation, across the fucking planet. And the real reason is that one, you're not solidifying that connection about talking about things that really fucking matter. So I started looking back at those fucking approaches and I just started thinking like, what was missing and then it hit me. I wasn't talking about anything really fucking serious. And honestly, here are the main things that really build that deep connection with the chick that solidify that second fucking date. This is some shit I could swear on. I could put it on my, right, on everybody, man. I could put, yo, I swear on everything. This right here, this is one of the most important videos you could possibly watch because if you do not get good at this, Nothing's gonna fucking matter because being able to communicate and report and express deep fucking emotions That shit is what's gonna make chicks look at you and say things like oh my god I didn't think I would be so comfortable with you so fast or I, I normally am not Like fucking talking to a girl about all my deep life stories I mean a guy talking to a guy about all my deep life stories within you know just this short amount of time So let's get into it man your passions that's the first and foremost thing I know it took a little bit while with this video but your passions your first first thing right off the bat honestly we all have those passions we all have those interests and I think the first most strategic way to bring up a chick's passions a lot of times is to just take a guess look at her look at the type of chick she is what is she wearing is she wearing some gym shit she might just be going she might just be someone who keeps in fit so you might just say something like hey you look like you keep in shape do you work out a lot are you are you like one of those passionate fitness people it's okay you know just as long as you're not taking steroids in the back room nah i'm just playing you don't have to say all that but the point is that you want to get to the point where you can say shit and bring this up in a smooth manner and taking a guess and assuming something is a great manner because what's gonna happen is even if you're wrong she's probably gonna correct you and be like no i don't do that and then it just naturally leads to you saying like oh okay what do you what is your actual passions what are your actual fucking interests i remember a girl i went up to she had clear glasses and her, her outfit just looked a little bit different and i just went up to her and i told her like after I went up to her court, I essentially told her she looked like an artist. And not only was I right, but she actually had drawings with her right then and there. So as I'm getting coffee with her, we're actually looking at her drawings and they're really fucking good. And it was just amazing because that was something that was one of my passions when I was a kid. I fucking love to draw. It was one of, like, one of my first loves was just animation and just the whole just imagery of everything. Just I always visually got appealed by all that type of shit. And that kind of just it opened everything up. And just by taking that guess, just by using your fucking brain and analyzing you can open that up you can also just bring something up yourself you can just make it kind of here's a good way ask her opinion on something for example first of all you have to be you first of all you have to have shit to do because there's also a lot of guys out there who are like hey man i don't fucking do nothing i just talk shit on the internet and troll and fucking smoke weed beat off and play video games like well i mean it's kind of hard to expect a chick to talk about her passions if you have no fucking passions yourself now here's the thing if you haven't done a lot listen talk about things that you want to do okay talk about things that you have a lot of passion or interest into doing as opposed to you know if you really have to, if that's really the situation but i'm sure we all have passions and interests that at least we can make sound a little decent you could just bring it up for example like hey i've been working on this project what do you think about this do you think this looks better or do you think this looks better and that naturally leads to her you know knowing what the fuck you do having her own ability to be, be to have input without you bragging because that's another thing because a lot of guys they're not fucking subtle you're there you're like yeah I, I i fucking i fucking i don't even know you're just not subtle about it so that's a good way to just get her involved and be smooth about it at the same fucking time so let's move on to number two ambitions now this is a little bit different from passions because passions is things that we are things that we're into you know honestly i could have said hobbies but i think passions is a lot better of a word it just has it derives a lot more emotion now for ambitions this is something that I honestly like to be bold with this one. This is my big tip for this one, is to be bold. I like to just say something along the lines of like, 
Are you ambitious? By the way, I, I know this is random, but like, you look like you'd be an ambitious person. Like, I could picture you, like, being up all night, working on some project, or whatever the case is, or, or something along the lines of that. This is something where you may not be able to ask, obviously ask a chick something like this when you first fucking meet her. It might be just a little bit too fucking entitled. But when you're already in a conversation and you're getting to know each other, you can say boldly, like, are you ambitious? Like, are you an ambitious person? Or are you just like, you stay at home and Netflix and chill all day. I mean, that's cool. I'm not going to judge you. I just, I was just curious. Now, you could take that route. You could take the more positive route. Or you could take the more challenging route. And that depends on the vibe. She might be in a situation. You might, she might be a little cold to you. And you might have to take more of that qualified to me type of vibe. And that might actually work better because it leads to her being like, well, yeah, I'm ambitious. Because she don't want to sound like a, uh, like a bum. That's basically what it is. She doesn't want to sound like a bum, so she's going to naturally... Nobody wants to say certain things that they... Nobody wants to say, oh, I'm fucking lazy. Even the laziest person doesn't like to go, oh, I'm fucking lazy. That's just what it is. That naturally leads to her talking about it, which will lead to her proving herself and validating herself to you, which will naturally make her more attracted to you because she's proving herself to you. When the girl does not have no attraction for you, trust me, you ask her some shit, she's going to be like, she's not going to want to... She doesn't give a fuck about proving herself to you whatsoever at the end of the day if you do not have standards what the fuck it's not just all about getting the girl because a lot of times the best way to get the girls to actually have standards and be willing to cut out the girls that aren't for you if you meet a girl and she just says something that you're just like what the fuck if she's over here telling you that she has three guys on child support or something i know that's a little bit extreme but if she just tells you something we just like yeah that's just wow it's okay to book it, it doesn't even have to be like that. If you over here to asking her, hey, are you ambitious? And she just flat out goes, no, because there are girls out there who will literally say like, no. I met girls, I've talked to girls where they'll literally be like, no, like, I don't really do much. I just go to work and go home and chill with my man or some shit. Like they say shit like that. There's the girls out there like exist and they, they've been so coddled by guys that they have no game. They have no ability to be like, yeah, I do. They just, they're just so honest. It's kind of sad. But sometimes they just also don't like you and they just don't really give a fuck about saying shit. That sounds good. Three, your family. Your family, your family, your family. This is one of the most founding building blocks of who we are as a person. I mean, your family, I don't even need to explain to you why this is important. If you're just talking to a girl about motherfucking TV shows and whatever the case is, it's like, what the fuck are we here for? At the end of the day, it's not just about meeting a girl, but actually getting to know her. I mean, do you want to know who she is? Do you want to see if she's actually a good person? Then this will naturally come up. It's not, see, a lot of guys have this idea of trying to be, trying to have a good impression rather than actually trying to get to know it. It's like, kind of like me, like when I started this when I started making these videos or even sometimes now you get into this mindset of I want to make a good video rather than I want to actually give tackle the issue or get to know the person whatever the case is in that situation for example you might be in a situation where you're on a date with a chick and you can bring up your fucking family in a very casual way you could be like oh man like so lately my sister my sister's actually been becoming vegan lately and she's eating healthy and I'm proud of her I'm like shit finally like it's just, it's good to see someone you're close to start to eat healthy, like it's inspiring me. I'm over here with a burrito, like shit, I kind of feel guilty. I need to you know, put this fucking burrito down. This is a great way because something like this, it sounds casual, but in that moment, you kind of let her know that, hey, I have a family member, I love her, I take care of her, I'm glad she's doing fucking well for herself and it inspires me to do better. That whole thing is a very positive thing that raises how she sees you and it makes her want to fucking raise her own self to that level because now she's going to be here like, haha, yeah, that's true, we do have to be healthy because, you know, I mean, I don't want my fucking family members to die. She's going to naturally kind of feel that too. She's going to start to raise herself to the things that you say. When you bring up your family too, also gives you the opportunity to bring up her own family. Now you can look at her and say like, oh, what about you? Do you have any sisters? Do you have any brothers? Do you have any siblings? Now she's talking about her family. Now she starts to become a real person, which leads us to the next one, which is for her childhood, your childhood, both of your fucking childhood. I got a little story for you, man. I remember one time it was my second date with a girl and it got to a point where it was literally raining outside. It started pouring, and the only thing they buy was a McDonald's. So I was just like, fuck it. I guess this first day is going to have to be at McDonald's. So at one point, we're inside of McDonald's, and we get some food, and I'm chilling. And I, I'm like, fuck it. I steal Juice's old technique. I start laying on the chick, and start. I just start talking about shit. I start talking about my childhood, and it just ended up getting to the point where I was talking about my favorite cartoon. 
which was Tom and motherfucking Jerry. And if you fuck with Tom and Jerry, then I fuck with you. And I used to know a chick, actually, my first ex, she fucking told me. She literally said, well, why do you like Tom and Jerry? They don't even talk. And I just looked at her like, bitch, are you fucking, are you out of your mind? Tom and Jerry is the shit. I mean, one of the funniest cartoons, the visual animation, the fucking ability to just be funny on cue, the visual, just that funny visual style is something that's missing from cartoons today. I know there's a little off topic, but I just wanted to say it. Man, fuck that first. I just want you to know, bitch, you're out of your fucking mind. If you watching this, you probably are watching this. These stocking bitches, man. I seen a bitch on DuckDuckGo the other day. In my analytics, it said people were going to this channel on DuckDuckGo. You know what DuckDuckGo is? DuckDuckGo.com is a site where you look shit up and it fucking, it, it basically covers you up. It, it doesn't let it, you be traced, basically. It, and so basically, the only person who would possibly be doing that would be a girl. Let's be honest. I mean, what dude would sneak? It just doesn't even make any fucking sense. Anyways, it's besides the fucking point. I got to the point where I was there lying to her, telling her this story about Tom and Jerry and how I just liked it. And I was speaking in a way where I was like, yeah, man, I, I, this is my favorite car. I actually told her that story. I said, yeah, the first girl I dated, she said that. And I was like, what? Like, that's dumb. I, I fucking, I, I just started speaking about it in a way where she literally told me later on that it was one of the most attractive things that happened on that date. It just was so memorable to her. And it's funny because a lot of the times when girls talk about the most memorable moments on a date, it's a lot of times those moments where you talk about those deep, solid connection topics, where you talk about those deep comfort things that bind you together, which makes you a real person. It doesn't necessarily have to be some crazy shit. I just spoke about a cartoon, but it made me human in her eyes. I wasn't just this charming, funny guy. Now I was this kid watching this cartoon. Now she sees this evolution of a person. Now she really sees me as this real, fucking person now on the topic of childhood you can also just flat out ask her like what were you like as a kid or again taking a guess is a great technique you can just be like hey you kind of strike me like you were probably really shy as a kid a lot of times you can guess like if a chick is somewhat reserved then you could probably guess she was shy as a fucking kid and be like hey did you get picked on it's okay you don't have to lie were you shy as a kid like whatever the case is you can just make that assumption or you can just flat out go the other direction you could be like hey you seem like you were probably a badass kid growing up where, where you be honest were you a bad kid growing up you fucking driving your parents crazy and shit that naturally leads to her talking about her childhood at least to you talking about her and also remember this is a back and forth conversation so whenever you're talking about each of these topics whether it be your passions your hobbies your future ambitions you know your childhood whatever the case is you want to relate back and forth remember this don't just get caught up talking about her like she says something yeah yeah i fucking something happened with my family whatever the case is and then just like oh yeah and then what happened oh cool so what about this oh yeah yeah cool what about like at some point you also have to remember it's just a back and forth you're just going back and forth you're talking about your shit and speak with some passion and enthusiasm actually have genuine curiosity if you don't actually like the girl you're not going to be good at this because you're not even going to be interested you're just going to be putting on a fucking act and that shit it might work, but it, ah, man, you, I don't know. It's just, it's just not going to be as fucking genuine. Dreams and fantasies. The reality is, as humans, we got that left brain and we have that right brain, that logical brain and that fucking creative brain. All of us, we had dreams. All of us, we have a whole reality. We have a matrix in our mind, if you think about it. I could climb through buildings. I could travel to Italy all in my fucking mind. As long as I have some level of references for it. So when, when you're talking to women, we all have dreams. We all have moments. And when our, well, for example, you can just ask them, what did you want to be? when you were a kid growing up. What do you want to do right now if you had no fear of money? If you had no like limitations of money or whatever the case is, it could even be the laws the lines of like, what is your favorite superpower? Not everything needs to be based on reality. When you can actually talk to a chick about fantasy role playing shit, when you're talking about superpowers, you're mad, you're putting all these images, you're imagining yourselves in different countries, at the beach, at the ocean, doing this, robbing banks, whatever the case is, it creates this, this, this crazy reality inside her head now you might feel like oh it doesn't exist but in a way it does exist because you're you're putting on these images oh yeah we're gonna be like body and clyde riding banks now robbing banks now she's over here thinking of you guys all suited up sexy with guns and shit now 
Maybe you're talking about some other situation where she's picturing you guys, she's constantly picturing this bubble of you versus the world, talking about fantasies, talking about things, role playing and just being able to talk about things outside of logical, logical, what do you do at work? What's going on at school? Oh yeah, I'm fucking writing and I'm going on the bus. It's just all logical, regular shit. Talk about shit outside of this reality. Talk about, hey, hey, what, like if I was a sexy alien, would you fuck me? I mean, you can be honest, I mean, I think I'd be a sexy alien, I'm just saying. When you have that ability to be creative with your mind and your, your ability to have conversations, it actually leads to deep topics. It might start off funny, but it leads to you really really talking to her and she really realizes, oh shit, this guy is not just every other guy. He talks about things that just make me laugh and make me think and it's just not that typical fucking logical A, B type conversations. And this is something that's very important, man. Be creative. You gotta be creative with these bitches, man. And I think that was basically all five. But there's also a bonus one that is a little bit controversial. It's only controversial because sometimes it can lead to a dark place and it may not be where you wanna lead to. And it's not about also making this a goal, but sometimes the reality is in this world, we live in a yin and yang world with positive and negative. So all of us, we're gonna go through amazing happiness and amazing pain. So a lot of times talking about your struggle is one of the most powerful ways to just build a connection with a girl. Here's the thing. I'm not saying for you to go out of your way to talk about negative things because it could put her in a mindset that isn't where you want to be. I'm not saying that's what you want to do, but for example, on a lighter note, I would just say on dates, it, on one date, for example, I, I had the same problem. I was flirting with her and I was having trouble getting her to open up because she was a very shy and reserved girl. So it was tough because I was playing the flirty role and she was playing the I'm standoffish. However, it got to the point where it wasn't until I spoke about how I used to be chubby, how I used to be fat, how I used to have fucking titties and I was shy and I went through that whole transformation of going on a diet, taking up sports, trying to be more social, talking to girls, and I made this transformation where she finally kind of looked. It was one moment basically where I said something funny. I was just like, I was looking in the mirror and I, and I was all, my hair was soaking wet and I was just like, damn. This is not Papi Chulo right now. And she was she was Hispanic, so this just made her crack the fuck up, but it also humanized me in that moment. And it, was, it wasn't until that moment that she really solidified a connection with me because it brought about her struggles. Now, that also frees her up to talk about the things deep because at the end of the day we all have our demons when you have when you talk to your best friend they know all the bad shit but they know about the bad relationship between your parents or the divorce they know about that the bad shit in your life and they know about the good shit in your life that's what makes that connection with you and your best friend strong so if you cannot talk to a girl if she feels like she has to act fake around you because she can't talk about some real shit some really real 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 shit then it's just gonna be a fake type of thing and she's not gonna have that real strong connection when she's over here like when you're over here like hey yeah shit my parents got divorced too oh man you're kind of fucked up too huh tell me about it obviously not in that funny manner but when you can do that that shit brings you so close with a chick and this is just dangerous because you want to be careful with this because obviously this is not something that is a super duper strategy oh man i want to talk about something horrible that happened and bring them fucking mood down but sometimes it's okay to talk about your struggles as a matter of fact, it's not sometimes. You have to eventually talk about your struggles because that's what's really gonna make you too close, man. That pain bonds people. Just like positive shit bonds people, pain also bonds people really well. I'm sure some of the most closest homies are dudes in prison, for example. There's a lot of motherfuckers out here, best friends their whole life, but you're not really best friends with them because you've never been tested. It's like an anime called Death Parade about people who get judged in the afterlife based on how they react in a situation where they're put to in a horrible situation where they have to really get their morality tested, like on some saw shit, basically. Dudes in prison can have friendships where they're like, man, I literally fought life and death with this dude. Like, I know he's solid. He literally, I seen him fight for his life with me side by side. I know he's solid. That is a strong and powerful thing. And that is an incredibly powerful bonus thing that I just want to know. I just feel like, hey, it's, a, it's, it's very powerful. And I'm just saying, I'm warning you. But ultimately, I think it's something that just needs to be said because it's just reality, man. And it's just, it's just, it is what it is. Woo. Now, I know that was a bit of a long video, and this is just something that it hit me because a lot of guys, they just, we're all talking about how you, you're, talking about, you, you're talking about the approach, you're talking about going up to the chick, but ultimately, man, if you can't learn how to express yourself on some deep shit, 
You're not gonna be able to, you're not even gonna be able to round to be around that girl for a long amount of time. When you can express yourself deeply, this chick is always gonna be enthralled with you because she's always gonna want to know your take on everything. As soon as she sees something, she's like, oh man, I want to know what he thinks because his mind, the way it works, is so deep. I, I have to know. Like she, she begins to have a deep admiration for you, and ultimately, man, I wanted to make this video because a lot of guys we struggle with them flaky fucking numbers, getting them second dates, and ultimately keeping chicks around long term so with that being said man like subscribe comment below let me know your thoughts and ultimately man unleash your best with women and beyond and remember till next time confidence is bred like competence peace